Chair began life as the precocious teenagers of Australian rock, they've grown to become the 20-something rockers the world has been waiting for. We formed the band in um, 1992, I think, and me and Ben were just playing around, just jamming, doing the Elvis songs. And, that, and then we decided that we needed a bass player because it didn't sound too full with just a two-piece, you know what I mean? So we got him and then we started writing some songs. Originally called The Innocent Criminals, lead singer guitarist Daniel, bass player Chris and drummer Ben cut their musical teeth wherever they could. Um, I think the first gig we played was probably at our school and it was uh, very embarrassing and we were very scared and I think we played like shit. Can I say shit? The three teenagers from the New South Wales city of Newcastle entered and won a band competition run by SBS TV. We got signed to Merv. We got signed to Merv because um, of a national demo competition that we entered and yeah, we won it and won like a film clip and someone from Murmur Records obviously saw it and rang us up and said, do you want a recording contract? And we said, yeah, all right. After a quick name change, they jumped straight into the studio and pumped out their first album, Frog Stomp. However, the boys tried to maintain a normal teenage life. That's all we do. Play music, surf and go to the pool. <laughs> their first single, Tomorrow, went to number one in 1994. The next year saw their single Pure Massacre debut at number two and the boys played their first major festival, Sydney's Big Day Out. Juggling school and playing festivals like Home Bake in Reading in the UK soon became everyday activities for Australia's youngest rockers. They didn't let a little thing like the HSE get in the way. I'm going to study a little bit. Not, not like, not like uh, for ages and ages, you know, a few hours for yeah. each subject. The band built on their success with Freak Show, which saw them reach beyond their teen grunge roots with singles like Freak, Cemetery and Abuse Me. Album number three, Neon Ballroom, saw Silverchair evolve as songwriters. They began to deal with more complex issues like anorexia. The stuff that I went through personally was brought about, you know, through a whole different unusual set of circumstances. So I'm sure people that have gone through or are going through similar things that I went through, uh, you know, they're under, they're in them situations, you know, for different reasons. The band finally took time off their busy schedule to recoup and work on their fourth album. In the downtime, Daniel teamed up with DJ Paul Mack for the aptly titled project, I Can't Believe It's Not Rock. It was good to just get on a different path for a while and have some fun doing something that there, there wasn't necessarily the pressure that's involved in writing something for Silvercheck. After their time off, they returned to the studio at the end of 2001 to start work on Diorama. I'd say it would be a little rusty. Yeah. We've been in the studio for a month and a half or something. Mm -hmm. But um, it doesn't take long to get back into it, just a week of rehearsal and then be back in the zone. And as maturing songwriters, what hidden depths can be found in their songs? Yeah, there's, there's lots, of, um, lots of messages, like really good lentil soups if you play the album backwards.